November 15, 2020, as city, the city of San Jose is experiencing another dry cold spell rhythm, which also occurred in 2019. These are the conditions now. Look at the remarkable conditions in low river systems along the San Jose Manetta Airport. Upwells along with oxygen coming from the bottom from the seismic activity as the rivers go over these splits from the San Andreas Fault of the Titanic Plate. Many other sources from dewatering freeways and high rises. This one here is over, been documented over 30 years now as high as three and four cubic foot per second, never stopping. September 24, 2020, observing the, the intake pond closest to Camden Avenue from the Guadalupe Creek system. These ponds do not have to necessarily be filled to move water down to the furthest pond. Water filtrates back into the creek system and then filtrates back into these ponds to create the conditions you'll see next. The last remaining ponds remain dry through this September 24th period. These next chain of ponds are the closest to Almaden Expressway and the creek system that is already showing signs of going dry. Observing the main pool ponds in front of the Santa Clara Valley or Valley Water District's main headquarters and valve systems keeping these ponds completely dry since the last drought of 2013. Eleven other ponds along Guadalupe Creek system being kept dry during the start of a new drought, 2020. Metcalf Ponds at Coyote Creek, May 16, 2020. Valley Water District conducted tests by releasing and sending waters through the Metcalf ponds, drastically raising the water levels and then bringing them down and drawing fish from lower river systems. Here are these minnows. Looking at the October time frame of the one gate open, in the November 5th time frame, Valley Water chose to release tens of millions of gallons a day down the Coyote watershed to stray Chinook salmon and entrap them within the Osier Pond systems. At the same time, the Guadalupe River was being dried back. Estimated flows were about 160 cubic foot per second when gates are open. Moving back and forth between the two largest river systems from the Coyote to the Guadalupe River. This is the Guadalupe River in one of the introduced habitats at St. John Street. November 14, 2020. Observing the temperatures coming down. Monitoring and surveying the introduced habitats at the SAP Pavilion. Probing around with fishing poles during the open season to identify population growth. During the drought 2014 to 2016, steelhead were extirpated from lower river systems within projects and the, the rejoice that steelhead have returned. Developing specialized equipment not to scare fish. Here you're seeing a steelhead holding amongst the big cobble rock that has been introduced and you could identify this steelhead because he has a white mouth and as, a, as he makes his turn, you'll be able to see some of the paw markings, but the turbidity levels were pretty high with the shade. Alongside these restoration areas for endangered fisheries are these giant homeless compounds in the next scenes. Next scenes are the abandonment areas up and downstream of St. John Street where designated multi-million dollar projects for the recovery of endangered fisheries and animals. Salmon and steelhead rearing habitat. Countless studies by Valley Water or the Santa Clara Valley Water District with the help of volunteers overseeing operations and coordinating with the Guadalupe Resource Conservation Office under the first agreement to keep flows functioning under the laws, under a face agreement to 
monitor and keep these areas safe. Between both the Santa Clara Valley Water District and the City of San Jose are giving direct orders to their employees to not report or even observe activity. City of San Jose employees and Santa Clara Valley Water District giving assistance and leaving the scene so they will not have to document what they find. Here is a made up shower. Behind the shower are storm drains where people are bathing constantly, sending down phosphates and soap and killing off the steelhead within these regions. Virginia Avenue Bridge segments of three to four miles being allowed to go dry by operations. As the river's flows were turned off in the September time frame, continued on throughout the end of the year. Documenting where the drybacks start and end, just further upstream about two miles away at the old gauge 23B or now known as the Almaden Expressway gauge. The conditions were completely dry all the way down to the San Jose areas of the city of San Jose along the Children's Discovery Museum. This is actually the Capital Expressway dealerships to better understand how this catastrophic failure to use impounds from Anderson Reservoir storage from the Calero pipeline, the green pipeline identified in the maps from the Osher Pond feasibility studies in 2018. Failing to come up with a plan to use those flows and water to keep Guadalupe River system in good condition, Valley Water neglected to utilize available data over a 26 year period to keep both watersheds functional. And this is Canoas Creek tributary just down from this gauge station. Understanding the importance of Canoas Creek and the role it plays from the Coyote Basin flows emanate and are sent down this canal and feed the Guadalupe River when the flows are brought up on Coyote Creek near the old IBM facility along the Monterey Road. In downtown San Jose at, at the 280 going over the Guadalupe River, you can see the river was completely dry for about three miles. The dryback started right around the September time frame. Valley Water District personnel attended meetings at the GRCD and had the water turned back on, but the damage had been done. These are scenes of CHP officers taking breaks at the Children's Discovery Museum. Education centers all along the river systems, adjacent to river systems overwhelmed by the homeless population for now going on 28 years. Between both entities, the Water District and City of San Jose, Abandoning regions that are under their control so they will not have to deal with the problems of the damage that is going around their Allowing facilities. Allowing the homeless to have major construction without permits and breaking laws to create hazardous conditions and criminal compounds accumulations. November 5th, 2020, this is an outfall system sending water through the bypass at the Wazway alongside the Children's Discovery Museum. All of the education has been abandoned now for five to ten years and these are the conditions that are there now. Conducting surveys and calling it in about these barrier crossings that homeless were constructing. Steve Holmes from South Bay Clean Creeks Coalition. Despite flows were taken away drastically from the main Guadalupe River system, the Los Gatos still allowed fish to move up. Six to eight cubic foot per second. Most of the flows that drew the salmon in were pump stations along the 880 or I-17 freeway. These are scenes that I managed to film some salmon. My estimates about 50 to 60 salmon might have showed up on Los Gatos. Observing the gauge information within the two month period, the average flows on Los Gatos Creek averaged a, a little over eight cubic foot per second for two months. Several pairs, including males, 
were found at uh, different locations. In our surveys, in uh, determining how large the populations were during the spawn, finding poultures casting in the holding areas and in the spawning areas, harassing the fish, and trying to illegally take. Observe the heavy equipment of three poles and large lures. After calls to the Department of Fish and Wildlife to have wardens come and cite this person, advising this person that he's illegally fishing, he still continued fishing the big deep pools where Chinook were holding. Forwarding the information to Warden Edward Corona. Observing the spawn occur and the fish were very skittish, uh, very shy because this guy was harassing the fish. Here we have fish that were attacking the camera and observing me, observing the camera as I was trying to film them. Very skittish. But I did get, manage to get some salmon on film, but it was very difficult. Spent numerous hours trying to get the perfect shot. You can see the fish has its adipose as he swam by. Uh, the only fish that I observed that had an adipose fin. Part two will be covering stranding Chinook salmon and steelhead rainbow trout within operations by raising flows and making fish be lured to a watershed that will put them in danger within the operations. The coyote watershed and the affiliation that occurred with the drybacks on Guadalupe River system and what happened with the stranding and trapping of Chinook and Polching areas within the coyote watershed within the Osier Pond system. Also to address barriers on other lower, bigger tributaries downstream of Anderson Reservoir. This is Fisher Creek. It has large barrier rubble and is known to have numerous perennial streams that can repopulate the coyote watershed with steelhead rainbow trout. 